Hello, this is Daniel, and welcome to another part of the character modeling tutorial. This part will be about uh, closing this area. So, um, we will do it similar to here. You know, we didn't have really a way to connect those, so we're just aligning them as good as we can. Um, you will find out later about the details of, of how to continue working with that. Uh, that's just how I like to do it because it's really worth the details that you get to be able to sculpt down there. So, um, yeah, I'm just taking some vertices and extruding them. <laughs> well, same as what we always do, <laughs> isn't it? By the way, at this point, maybe I'd like to talk a little bit about a um, quick topic about navigation. Um, you see there, I guess I will, I mean, you, you see I've a couple of times referred to video number zero. Uh, in fact, I haven't recorded that video yet uh, because I want to keep it, well, obviously, I mean, I'm planning to show the, the final result in that video and yeah, well, the result is not there yet, so how could I record it? But in that video, I'm planning to um, talk about the changes that I made to my version of Blender and one of those is the navigation system so if you watched part 0 I guess you will have already heard some of this so I don't know if I'm repeating myself or not yet but what what's the big change that I want to say is uh, that I like to use the what was it called you know, there are two types of navigation, turntable and trackball, and turntable allows you to just rotate around the object and not to spin your character, uh, your camera like this. You can just go up and go down and from left to right, and that's pretty easy to navigate with and good for beginners, but you don't really, you aren't really free to move from wherever you like to, from, you know, whichever angle you want to view it, for example. I'm pretty sure you couldn't view a character like like this. You could view it like this, but you couldn't go to the side like that. Um, so I usually recommend people to activate uh, trackball and just get used to it, which is quite hard, but um, you know, back then I think you didn't have the choice to... I don't know, maybe you had it just to knew about it, but earlier a few years ago, the default Blender navigation was uh, Trackball. I hope that's the right name, by the way. I'm not even so sure. It should be Trackball. Um, and so I got used to it. But the new users have, as default, the turntable navigation, and that can sometimes lead to issues. I mean, yeah. Normally, they just get used to it later on when they're most more serious about using a 3D software. But I just thought I would mention it. So if you want to pick up that and or if you didn't know about it, then just try it out. And for those of you who are purposely using uh, the other one, the turntable, it's fine. You know, it's, it's just about what which one you're easier with. It's not like you had to use it. Uh, so you see, we kind of closed this area really quickly and I'm not running into many issues here, which I'm actually a bit surprised about because I'm always, these are always the hard parts. You can easily create shapes, you know, and get them right. Uh, but as soon as you connect two shapes, um, you run into issues most of the times. But this time it seems to go well. Just okay. Now let me talk a bit about the shape of the face of you know this kind of style. Since well, that's what it's about here. Uh, you, I'm sure you remember how far we went with this uh, loop to the front when we created it, and everything behind that will actually bend back again, so we won't see those areas anymore. And that turns out to work pretty good and. 
one of the th it was one of the things that I made wrong for a really long time. I mean, that's what, in particular, what um, made my tr uh, my you know tries to reach this style look not so successful. So if you want to, you know, focus on some of those things, this is one of it. You you might want to think about that. Now we have an ear somewhere in here, but who knows where it should be. Uh, for now we'll just try to cover the most um, visible areas. I mean, you basically don't want to see any holes in the head, so we'll just make sure to cover all of those, and this edge here we can delete it. You know, there was still this guide uh, Client that we created, you don't need it anymore. So you can also hide the hair for a while, you know. It's in a way then just hide it. And then mold the head somehow. Now over here there's going to be the ear, so I'm going to leave a little bit of space, but I'm thinking about where to really mold it or not because you know if you don't see it you don't need to mold it. <laughs> Alright, that's what I say. <laughs> well it depends on what you want to do with it. If you really want to make an the ultimate character that can be viewed from any angle and have any animation and it's for a big project and you need to really be professional and everything, then sure you want to do it and do everything properly and what not, but um, if you're just doing it as a hobby, you have so much freedom, it's really fun. <laughs> you, you just, in my opinion, just have fun working on it. <laughs> Don't do the things that you dislike, except you really, your goal is really to become a professional and things like that. <laughs> well, I wonder. So, so well, it turns out I mold the ear. Well, as if it is anything complex, you just, uh, with these kind of characters, all you have to do is basically create something sticking out of the head and give it then some extrusion inwards. And that's already good enough to be considered an ear, in my opinion. <laughs> Um, so let's unhide the hair again. Also make sure to set things to smooth. You know, there are some areas that weren't set to smooth. Shading, recalculate normals just in case. And there is one hole that I want to close. This one here. And yeah, that's it. Just close this area. And let's check if anything is still open. So we can move. I guess for these kind of places now, what we have to do is really um, go from the opposite direction. So everything else will be like trying to get the hair closer. But that will be... That is good the way it is. We don't need to work on that for now. We could later, but for now it's all right. Just one little thing. Just try to at least a little bit cover areas that are that could potentially be a problem. So you just accept that for now, from down here, it's not a good idea to look at the character. What you have to do to um, you know fix that is really model the inside of the hair here, and we might cover that a little bit later. Uh, you know, as soon as we figure out what this character is going to used for and we might do modifications and different versions or whatnot and that's why I'll leave it as it is for now so yeah you know for example we have a scarf by the way in the costume so that's a good way to cover things that we don't want viewers to see 
But we got quite far and it finally starts looking like a real human. Um, that's perfect. One last thing for this part, I want to add a bit of volume here. Something I wasn't happy with. Let's see if we can easily achieve that. I'm moving these out. Yeah, that, that improved a little bit. And over here, just a little bit. And yeah, that's good. So, once again, we got, we got further with our project of modeling this character. As always, I hope you learned from it as much as you can. And I'm again distracted <laughs> of fixing stuff. So I really want to get rid of this one edge. Ooh, which one is it? These two. So I'm just connecting some of this simply because there was too much. It looked a bit weird. Okay, so hope you enjoyed it and again also to see you in my next video. So have a good day and see you later.